Today's animation, as we know, is mainly done on computers, with CGI taking over animation, bringing movies like Despicable Me, Frozen and Shrek. Today's generation won't even remember the time when animation was just a moving drawing. But we're not starting with today's animation, no. We're going to travel back to when Mickey Mouse was just an idea in Walt Disney's head. To when the only way you could see a toy cowboy come to life is only by a child's imagination. We're going back to the start to where it all began in the 17th century with the Magic Lantern. The Magic Lantern was a machine that projected images that could have parts that moved and were projected onto a screen in front of a wide audience and gave the illusion of moving living monsters. This stunned the world. In fact, some people have never seen this before that they thought it was real. Nobody's ever seen this before, only drawings in books and newspapers. These moving images weren't considered as animation since that they were assisted to move by human hand, live in front of the audience. Animation is when so many pictures are moving at once, so fast, too fast for the human eye, that it tricks the brain into thinking that you are seeing an actual moving object. The first actual animation would be in the 1800s with the former trope. It is a toy that was a disc with pictures on each side, one side having a character, the other an object. You would spin the strings that were attached to each side of the disc. As the disc got faster and faster and faster, the images started to merge as one, giving the illusion of the character and the object being together as one. This was a technical animation. The 1800s also gave birth to another animation contraption. Some would say this was the first animation device. It was more merely the first contraption to show you a clip of animation, and that was the Zoetrope, which was a spinning cylinder with a ring of pictures on the inside. And when you spun it and looked through the slits, you would see a moving image, like a horse or a penguin. Now we're in the 1900s, now that video cameras are about, animation truly could start to exist on the big screen, starting with humorous phases of funny faces. It was a series of moving chalk drawings where each one had a different animation, like the first one consisting of a man and a woman. The man would each time get a different feature added to him, like a cigar or a top hat, to make himself look rich and powerful. Some people would say that this is the true birth of animation, others wouldn't really agree. Now we move to 1914, to the first characteristic animation, Gertie the Dinosaur. Gertie the Dinosaur is about a dinosaur that is given different commands by its creator. It was the first smooth drawn animation with fully moving animals or creatures in good quality and a scene so it was somewhere. I also mentioned she was the first animated character, well she was. She had a personality and a gender, like I said, she's a she. It's not fully true though, there was Little Nemo, but Nemo only had a name, not a personality. Gertie was the fully thought out, complete character, so it would be the first animation with a character. We now reach to 1928, this is where animation really starts to develop in its next step, and it started with Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie is Disney's first show of its iconic character Mickey Mouse, who is a sailor on a steamboat, which he wants to be captain of, but is bullied by the steamboat's captain, a mean cat. But it's not about the character, no, it's about the sound, the music. It was the first animation to produce music and sound, and while Disney himself really wanted to show it off on Steamboat Willie, he shows it off by having Mickey and Minnie play a song by using the animals that are hanging around the ship, like the clip of the Mickey using a cow's teeth as a
show up in animation. No, violence also shows up in Steamboat Willie, and this is something that stays in animation for a life sentence. One cartoon that points this out is Itchy and Scratchy, a children's cartoon featured in The Simpsons. We now move to 1929, not when animation expanded or something new happened, something that wouldn't destroy animation, but more make people aware of its entertainment. The Wall Street Crash of 1929, also known as Black Thursday, where the stock market just crashed and billions of dollars was lost, people lost their jobs and the homeless rose. This led to the Great Ten Year Depression, people had no money, or not a lot. They couldn't feed themselves or their families. They were bored, but they could go to one place, and that was the theatre. People went to the theatre to watch lots of cartoons that had just come out, like the skeleton dance made by Walt Disney. Because of the Great Depression, more and more cartoons were being made, and people's love for animation grew stronger. Because of this, it led to Walt Disney producing something that will change animation forever. Our journey to 1937, to where techniques were invented and animation's evolution expanded. Snow White was the first ever feature film to be created by Disney. The film is about a young woman who runs away from her home because of the evil queen, is jealous of her beauty, and attempts to murder the young princess. The movie used a bunch of different and new techniques, like rotoscoping, a technique used to get real human movement. What would happen is they would film an actual person dancing, then the animators would trace over the film frame by frame and turn it into an animation and make it a part of the film, giving Snow White real human movements. This was tried before, but the character's movements was too rubbery. One piece of equipment that Snow White had at its disposal was the multi-depth camera, which allowed the camera to shoot in with depth of field on the scenery, so they would have a scene all drawn out, and the camera would try and chop it up into layers, giving it depth of field, as my diagram above shows. One other technique was so that the film had no mistakes and that was Moviola. This helped Snow White be as smooth as a cloud. The animator would watch the clip through the Moviola and cut any bad bits out and replace them later. Disney also created its own sound effects and music with its own orchestra for Snow White. Here are a few clips. One thing that Snow White was famous for was his character's characteristics, but I will let Walt himself explain this. Walt, will you please? Dwarfs' names fit their personalities. This pompous looking individual is Doc, the self-appointed leader of the group. And this little fellow is bashful. He's secretly in love with Snow White. And this funny face is Sneezy. He has hay fever. And old droopy eyes is called Sleepy. And happy here with the beaming smile. And old sourpuss here is grumpy, the woman hater. And last but not least is Dopey. He's nice, but sort of silly. So there you have it. Walt Disney's first full-length feature film with Technicolor, and it raised over $3.8 million, shooting the roof of the box office, and it's still famous to this very day. Before I leave to the next year, I feel that I haven't explained how cell animation works fully. I gave you a clip, but not an explanation.
cell animation works the same as any video. Technically, video cameras are always filming animation. Animation is a series of pictures all squeezed together, each is a tiny movement. When you start the video, the pictures whiz by your eyes, tricking your brain. There's one thing that explains the speed of animation, and that's FPS, frames per second. This is to say how many pictures go past in one split second, so the default FPS you would get taught in school or college is 12 FPS. So 12 images will go past your eyes in one split second, but you won't see this, no. Well, you may see some lag, which is where the video looks really jumpy. An animator in the business would use 25 FPS. At 25 FPS, you would see no lag because since the image is going past your eyes so fast, your brain can't trace them. So animation tricks your brain into thinking you're seeing a moving object or a person in front of your eyes. It is used everywhere, even movies. So when you pause your film, you will pause on one frame. On one frame out of a million, but also, say you wanted your animation to be in slow motion. For movies, they would use a special camera that can catch up to 25,000 frames a second. So the more frames, the more cleaner HD video you can see in slow motion. With animation, you just need to extend your frames per second, so there'll be a lot more drawing involved. And I mean a lot more drawing. So here's a little paragraph for a movie. I know this is not about animation, but it does explain quite a bit. The Hobbit is around about 50 frames per second, where the Matrix slow motion things are about 50,000, probably less, frames per second, so you get nice clean slow motion. The next couple of years, animation just grew and grew, with Looney Tunes booming in 1969 and Claymation being Hollywood's way of creating real looking monsters, used by animators like Ray Harryhausen, who created the mythical beings of Jason and the Argonaut, the most famous scene with the skeleton soldiers of the underworld rising up and attacking Jason and his men. He also created films like Sinbad, The Seventh Voyage and One Million BC, but from 1979 to 1983, two men will join Lucasfilms and develop a new type of animation that will be accused of almost putting cell animation out of business. Before we go into 1986, I just want to make a pit stop in 1970. So I mentioned that throughout the years that animation is just booming. So shows are increasing and children are becoming lazier and stay at home to watch cartoons. But animation wasn't just cartoon shows and movies. It was also being used for advertisement, like the advert, the Cresta Bear advert. I like this advert because it's an old cell animation looks, plus the wacky bear that plays its part. Here's a few clips. Hi man, this is Cresta's new flavor, black currant. I wonder what. <laughs> black currant flavor, huh? It's okay, Cresta. Not in five fruity flavors. It's frothy, man. <laughs> Before CGI was used to make realistic films, production companies used claymation to create realistic creatures. For example, the 1933 film King Kong, about a giant gorilla who rules an island and is captured and brought to New York and ends up climbing the Empire State Building, where he is killed and also brings one of my favorite punchlines. Well, Denim, the airplane's got him. Oh, no, it wasn't the airplanes. Was beauty kill the beast? Claymation is when you create objects out of clay or some sort of soft material. Then you move it in tiny movements and take a frame until you have enough images to make a small video clip of your clay object moving. This can take a lot of time. It sometimes takes a week to make your person move one step. But once you've got the clip, you can be amazed of your results. Claymation was used to create realistic and bizarre creatures that would make audiences jump out of their seats. 
there was one problem with one creature, and that was the T-Rex. See, during early 1900s, movies that featured Tyrannosaurus Rex had him stand upright so he had a straight back. He didn't look like the one out of Jurassic Park, but this was solved later when new techniques helped movie makers change the posture of how Tyrannosaurus Rex stood. They discovered that Tyrannosaurus Rex had a slouched back, and that the tail was used to balance their front weight. When production companies found out about this, they soon redesigned their movie that featured Tyrannosaurus Rex and created a more terrifying monster. Now the year is 1995 and animation had made its way to be one of the most popular children's entertainment in the world, increasing its age range with the arrival of anime in 1988, with the film Akira being shown in western theatres. Animation was really booming but Pixar releases a full feature CGI film with the help of Disney called Toy Story and boom the world with the new film. Toy Story features living toys living in a boy's room dedicated to his love and attention. But when a new toy called Buzz Lightyear, played by Tim Allen, is given to the boy as a present, he becomes the boy's favourite toy, and Woody, the cowboy, played by Tom Hanks, becomes jealous of the toy, thinking he's being replaced, so he tries to get rid of the toy. Toy Story was a great hit in the box office, making up to $350 million. This knocked Pixar right up, giving them a great start to the animation world. And now we reach the point where CGI was at its peak. In 2009, director James Cameron created a film that was mainly just CGI. It was called Avatar. The young Jarhead, or how Sigourney Weaver puts it, Trigger Happy Jarhead, goes to another planet to take over the work his younger brother was doing. The reason for this is because he and his brother have the same blood. He was the only one to pilot the Avatar for his brother. The Avatar is based on the locals of the planet, the Na'vi, made by their DNA and his brother's DNA. He stays with the local tribe, falling in love with the chief's daughter. Then war breaks out, some people die, humans leave, yada yada, you've seen this story before. This showed how far CGI has come, showing almost reality films with well textured creatures and scenery. It took over four years for Avatar to be made, in a total sum of $350 million. The box office alone made $2.7 million. Now that's a lot of money. But let us leave this world. Our journey is now at its end, or nearly at its end. to our last year which is 2014 which is now nearly at its end so nearly 2015 when CGI is the dominant species of animation it's so popular that it nearly put cell out of animation out of business in the early 2000s but cell animation is still at about yep from 2000 to 2014 cell animation has made tons of films not forgetting cartoon shows like Simpsons, Family Guy, American Dad, Archer and Kim Possible but they have started to use computers to help them along and also bring in special effects so in some ways cell animation and CGI managed to find a way to work together Warner Bros cartoon Looney Tunes became one of the most popular cartoon shows in history and oldest other animations like cut out created popular shows like South Park created in 1997 South Park is about a small town in Colorado with four boys that go on all types of crazy adventures, and some weird ones. The last type of animation I would like to talk about is the world's most popular animation for the younger generation, anime. I mentioned this before, that anime was introduced to the West in 1988 with the film Aguila. Anime is a Japanese version of animation with manga comic drawing style. Manga is Japanese comics. It also taught the West just fractions and snippets of Japanese culture, teaching the West about Japan. I myself am a big fan of anime. I watch it all the time. Right now I'm watching Fairy Tale, an anime about a young wizard called Natsu, 
who is also known as the Dragon Slayer because he was raised and taught magic by a dragon. And his dragon father abandoned him at a young age, but Natsu has travelled to a wizard guild called Fairy Tale, doing all types of crazy adventures. I like the storyline, including the hilarious comedy. <laughs> And now, I end my journey here. Yes, I know, don't cry, don't cry. I hope you've enjoyed this ride of thrill and adventure, and learned a few things here and there. We've been through a lot. To those of you who have listened, I give my farewells. To those of you who didn't, eh, 